And we'll see if uh, Oh, that's not the right picture that should be showing. There we go. Okay. Third time is the charm. I guess. <laughs> All right, we're going to try this again. So, the three ty the two types of jobs they typically do are one is escort duty where they will escort shipments of stuff around the continent uh, typically from Point True to somewhere else or from Restale travel between Point True and Restale is pretty safe so from there and Point South um, uh, they'll they'll provide escort duty just to general make sure things arrive. There's a little bit of banditry, not that much. It's more protection from creatures. Um, and then another kind of job that they do is they uh, just provide kind of security services. Uh, like there's a group from the the mercenary company that is in point true right now that is basically doing security at a fixed facility um you know they're the, they're the security guards at the gate and at the, at the building um and so that's the primary types of jobs that they do um, occasionally they'll be asked to go pick up and deliver stuff that's why they have the ground trucks that they have so the the getting the things from the spacecraft wasn't completely out of line with what they did. They're usually not going in, you know, there's not usually a downed craft that they need to pull stuff out of, or, uh, you know, every once in a while somebody will find something and, uh, to do that, find out wild. And there it goes it again. Yeah. Well, I guess while we're waiting, one of the conversations we need to have is if we're going to be undercover here, how far are we willing to go? I, I'm... thinking it doesn't sound like we'd be asked, asked to do much more than we would be doing for Streel. I yeah, don't... As working for Streel, we shot these guys up. Are we willing to shoot up shoot other up people? Shoot up Streel? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound like we'd have to, necessarily. I... Alright. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm wondering... Hold on. I gotta look. It almost sounds like interference of some kind, except that that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Unless we go back to the uh, NSA listening center again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
They just know that Tom is giving out the secret launch codes for the, you know, nuclear missiles. There we go. Oh, yeah, Kim Jong Un is giving okay. them away. Done. <laughs> my my audio keeps connecting and disconnecting. Let's see if this stays up. <coughs> Okay. Where did I fall out that time? <laughs> you were just finishing talking about that they had a unit okay. in point true. Okay. That did security duties, and then the third type, and then boom. He's okay. The <laughs> going to get. No, no, My computer is completely wigging out, and I have no idea why. Well, we're just discussing how it's it's funny how it only happens when you try to advance the story. Yeah, I, so I guess if we just sit here and talk, we'll be fine. Um, yeah, it's like I'm not using the CPU. I'm not using the memory. I'm hardly using the network. The GPU is going busy because it's streaming and encoding the stream but it always does that and now that i'm talking and not trying to advance the story it's working just fine <laughs> although i am hearing beats are you yeah just a little bit <clears throat> hmm. i don't know see if you could tell us what the third type of mission is so the third type was picking stuff up. They would, uh, like going to get the spaceship, stuff from the spaceship. They would do things like that. Occasionally people would find things and they'd get hired to go pick them up and bring them back. So that type of a job is not unusual. It's not common, but it's not unusual. But the, the fact that there was a down spaceship, that just doesn't happen very often. So that was a bit of a unique and they didn't to question it. why the spaceship was down? No. They weren't like, like somebody's going to shoot it down for us? They were. No. Not as far so. as you know. And they didn't know. The people you're talking to had no. They said, no, we just got. In fact, we were, we were coming back from um, a delivery job, but we weren't bringing anything back. And we get a call. We're on the road. We happened to be out there. And they said, just divert over here and get this. And they, you know, there might have been some, it, some people, or things we had to deal with to get it, but uh, it was strill, so you know that doesn't doesn't bo bother the yeah. boss, and we just do what we're told. Well, okay, but I mean, <clears throat> that's kind of you know, I'm just gonna talk to you guys. That's kind of sketchy, though. You know, we're just. Taking stuff that you know, this isn't like protection. Yeah, I don't know. Delivery. I mean, I know we're just following I mean, orders and it's a paycheck, but. But uh, okay, but I don't want to get I, shot over stealing someone's stuff. I doesn't sound like they're they're like 
pirates or anything, okay? No, it just but sounds I mean, like somebody contacted them, say, hey, there's a ship down, see what you can scavenge, uh, and I'll pay you. Uh, whose ship is it? Oh, it's Streels. Oh, okay, great. We'll go do it. Well, I'm going to ask him point blank, well, who is this guy that asked us to do this? Because maybe we shouldn't be working for him and doing these kind of jobs. If he's going to put, I mean, it sounds like you guys got pretty shut up in the last. Yeah, that uh, we did. If we find those guys that did that, we want to meet them in a dark alley and let me tell well, you. I wouldn't blame you. But... <laughs> I, no, we don't know. I mean, she had. The uh, commander. I mean, is she commander. Mad at him, I what? Has the commander said anything like we're not working for those guys anymore? No. Not that I know of. I mean, she she doesn't tell us where she gets her jobs. So, I mean, I don't I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm just curious cuz, you know, I don't want to get shot. Well, yeah, neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, sometimes that's that's what the hazard pays for, I guess. Doesn't happen very often. <clears throat> So, as you're sitting there at breakfast, um, one of the higher-ranking members of the outfit uh, walks up to the table where you guys are at, and uh, she point, he points at uh, Checheka and at Zulki, and he says, you two... And I need one more who can man a gun. I guess me. Okay. But what what kind of gun? Uh, whichever kind. What kind are you good at? Doesn't matter. All right, I'll go. Um, he says so. We're we're running into Point True today. Uh, Commander Reese has uh ordered a couple new uh. Explorers to replace the ones we lost some of the ones we lost and uh, So we're gonna take yours your vehicle and our ground car. We're gonna take four driver and uh, Shotgun teams in and we're gonna drive the two new explorers and the, the four vehicles back out should be gone in half the day uh, Just run in grab the vehicles and come back, but we need uh, you to drive I've got the drivers you two will be manning uh, guns on the explorers Okay. So Just, uh, I, I'm better off in a beam weapon than. All right, you'll else. get to explore with the heavy laser on it then. All right. <clears throat> and I guess Zolki will get the other one because he can shoot everything. That's <laughs> a copy. Three though. What was that? Huh? You're only taking three. Yeah. Okay. So we need. So you. Uh, Dole and Chikara will just be here. Okay. okay. Well, while they're gone, I'm just going to keep looking for the opportunity to basically bug the, the robots, the, the maintenance okay. robots. All right. All right. So, those of you in, so the, the way, it, way it works out is that. Um, hold on, my computer rebooting, you know, all my stuff's not set up. Okay, so the so one, two, three of you. Okay, so um, there is a the the guy who came and got you. His name's uh, Hoyt. A human male. Uh, he'll be driving uh, the ground car in. Um, riding with him is uh, a, a human uh, woman uh, named Marilyn. Then uh, Shane, you'll be riding with them, as will uh, Zulki. And then there is. Uh, Another Rusk male named Nakai, a human male named Wes, and a Yazirian female named Gilbish, who will be riding with uh, Chikara, in, or not Chikara, Chicheka, 
in your guys' explorer into town. Um, so that's how it's going to be broken down. So you two will be in with uh, the two of the others in their ground car, and then everybody else will be in the explorer. So you'll have the opportunity to talk to them uh, on the drive if you want. Were these people involved in the uh, fight with us? Look to see if you recognize anybody. Did we lose Tom again? Yes, we did. I think we're good. He's probably Looks that way. I guess we'll. <laughs> All right, there we go. Sorry. Muting my headset doesn't work very well. I'll just have to mute it in Discord. My little ones came in here again. All right. Oh, yeah. So, um, were they involved? Uh, yeah, you can find that out as you're talking with them as you're driving. So, um, Marilyn was. She was driving uh, one of the ground trucks uh, in, in that. And uh, the, you find out that the... One of the gunner guys that was, is riding with Chikara, uh, Chicheka, uh, was on the on on that raid too. Okay. But yeah, there's no recognition. Uh, they don't seem to recognize you. I mean, she definitely would have wouldn't have. She was never that close. Um, and actually, neither would have West because he was riding shotgun with her. So those two, no, they wouldn't recognize you. Um, okay. But uh, you know, she, as you as you're talking about, she goes, "Yeah, we were we were going in." She starts telling you about what happened. And she says, "We were we were driving in. The the explorers went out front because you know there was a chance there might be some resistance, and uh, but they just figured it was going to be we just figured it was going to be a banged up spaceship sitting on you know crashed in the ground, and we were just going to be looking for pieces, and." Uh, and they get there, and the, the ship starts opening fire on them, you know, just out of the blue, and uh, blasting them. And then when the people got out, you know, our, our team got out and were on the ground because the explorers had gotten damaged and weren't drivable, apparently. And then they started shooting up the, the people on the ground. Apparently, they had a, a, a team there on the ground with another vehicle, and there was a bit of a, a dust up with them. Uh, I think we got one of their one of them though, uh, and from what from what they tell us, but that ship had operable weapons, and we just had to beat a retreat. Man, it, it shot all the way across, blew up one of the other trucks from half a kilometer away. Well, sorry to hear that. Yeah, not a, not a pretty <laughs> sight. <sad>. Like <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> hmm, I don't know what more information I could get from them if they don't seem to know much. Are those automated systems on the on that ship? Uh, we don't know. We never got that close. I don't know if it was automated or somebody was oh, manning it. Did you know what you were getting? No, no idea. We just said pick up the cargo from the ship and bring it back. We were supposed to take it up to Navin's Mill up the north end of the continent, which is where we had just come from. We were also on the way back from there when we got the call to go out there is why we were in that part well, of the area. There? Navin's Mill to seaport, north end of the continent. Um, you guys have a facility there? Do you always No. Stuff? No. Oh. We just we had just taken some stuff, we'd made a delivery up there and we're just on our way back. So we had empty trucks, we could pick something up. Um I was just wondering because it sounded like you had a facility up there, but I guess you just drop it off to the client up at Navin's Mill. Oh yeah, it wasn't it wasn't our stuff. It was a it was a delivery for P, uh, Pan Galactic. We do a lot. We tend to do a lot of deliveries for them. Oh okay, so Pan Galactic was the client to pick up that. Okay. Well yeah that that was well that was where we just dropped stuff off from. You know, 
I think they might have been involved in the in the in the recovery of the ship. I mean, we did hear it was a Strill ship, and it wasn't Strill hiring us. I can guarantee you that because Commander Reese doesn't doesn't do jobs for Strill. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was Pan Galactic that asked us asked her to send someone up to to get it. Why didn't she do jobs for Strill? Don't know. She's never told us, but she does not do drive jobs for Strail. I would think you'd want to make the money from the highest bidder. Uh, well, you know, we make enough money; they pay us good enough. How? But she, you know, what her profit margin is—that's her business. If she doesn't want that to be as high, well, you so know. what are we picking up today? Well, we're just going to get the, the vehicles today. The vehicles, okay. Yeah, we're just bringing back the new, the new, new explorers. So. Hmm. Do you think you guys were set up? Oh, you mean when we raided the ship? Yeah. I don't think we were set up. Because, I mean, you said there was a team waiting for us. Them, or you. Yeah, but they may have just gotten there before us. I mean, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, the, the ship had been down for a while. It's entirely possible they had people in the area, too. It's just bad bad luck, really. Based, based on the size of the ship, do we have any idea what might be the minimum or the maximum uh, capacity for security detail? Yeah, well, it was a small ship. It was a... A dark class shuttle, just a little whole size two um, uh, ship, and it's actually designed for uh, um, a crew of, of eight, I think, is what it can hold. It doesn't hold as much cargo because it puts more crew into that size of a ship. But uh, it just, it just, I mean, everything in it would have fit on our two trucks. Uh, that's it's not it's it's effectively a one cargo unit cargo hauler. It's just an interplanetary, as opposed to or inter, it's actually interstellar capable. And that's what a, was the the detail complement on the floor? Us, we had eighteen people. We didn't expect it to be a problem. Actually, we had twenty two, including us drivers of the trucks. But there were eighteen people in, in the three explorers. Should have been. A, Easy, easy job, but uh, oh, something went wrong. Apparently, there was a Strill Explorer there with uh, a crew as well, so that kind of evened the odds a little bit more. But we thought we could get them, but uh, apparently the ship wasn't as banged up as we were led to believe, and it had a functioning laser cannon. Well, that's why I was wondering if you thought maybe that there was a uh, trap. No, I, I, if it was, you know, it went all the way up. I, it was a good faith contract. I mean, Commander Reese is pretty frustrated about how much equipment she lost and and the fact that we lost a lot of our, our a lot of our team. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think if she had any indication that it was. She wouldn't have sent us in. Hey, that uh, fire from the from the ship was it beam weapons or? Oh yeah, it was the the ship has a uh, pod laser turret on it, which in an atmosphere operates like a heavy laser, but with double the range. So it was effectively they were being shot out with a heavy laser. Uh, is what it, how it worked out. You got screens on these six warriors? No. Oh. They, don't ex <laughs> they don't exist in Star Frontiers. <laughs> it's not part of the standard rule set. So. What, screens? Are you yeah, kidding me? Not, not for vehicles. I thought that, env that environmental vehicle that we got, the Explorer, had, um, no. had a screen. No. No, they don't make vehicle size screens. Hey, Tom, is Angel's character with us? She, He's driving the other vehicle, so no, not at this point. 
He's right. he's with the other people. I was gonna he was gonna get a separate conversation had he been here. So the the reason I I wonder is uh, at some point I would like to you know when we're getting out and get in the vehicles talk to his character about seeing if it's possible to put a tracker on the new explorers. Oh okay. So that not necessarily activated, but something we could use later. That's and it might be kind of good if I could just kind of surreptitiously look at what the comm frequencies are. For which well, we com? have all the comm frequencies. Yeah, that I know, but I mean, like, does it look like they change them a lot, or they're always using the same standard ones? It'd be kind of a good idea to note that in case if we have to fight these guys eventually. <laughs> okay. Well, that's something you can keep an eye out for. Okay. All right. So you get into town, and uh, you pull up to a uh, pangalactic uh, distribution center, and uh, there's a couple new explorers sitting right there uh, outside the building uh, on the lot, and uh, uh, Hoyt goes in. He seems to be in charge of the of the job. Uh, he goes inside and uh, talks to him for a few minutes. And uh, uh, comes back out with the keys. And he says, all right, we're all set to go. Uh, so he, he makes assignments. Um, he says, uh, Rainy, you ride with me. Uh, I'll be taking that Explorer there. Um, it's got the, the, uh, the laser. The heavy laser on it. Um, uh, Zulki, uh, you ride with Marilyn. She'll be driving the other Explorer. It's got a machine gun on it. And uh, Nakai will drive the ground car back. And uh, Gilvish will, will ride with him. And then uh, we'll have Vance ride with Ch Checheka. Back in your explorer, he'll man your gun. Uh, just you know, be alert, keep an eye out. Uh, shouldn't be any problems. The road between uh, here and, and Reesdale is pretty, uh, pretty safe. Don't usually have any problems, but just be alert. And uh, let's get back. Okay. So. So you guys all mount up in your uh, respective vehicles, and uh, you can you can talk down to the driver of your vehicle if you want as you drive it back, uh, or you can just kind of keep an eye out. And uh, any other any other conversations you want to have? Anything you want to talk about, Zoki? You weren't here for the earlier ones, but I've been trying to catch up on them. Yeah. Your, uh, your stuff. But, you know, I'll follow along. No problem. Okay. I need to mine shotgun. So it's shooting down projectile weapons, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, we'll, we'll go ahead and switch back over to those back at the base. That's fine. All right, Eric. Mm -hmm. And John, what do you what are you yeah. going to be doing? John's going to be working in the tech lab. Um, they don't they don't really have a specific assignment for you right now, Eric. No, I need to go find something to blow up. <laughs> All right. So. Just uh, mosey around the base, look at look for, uh, you know, how I would set charges or whatever for our exit, or how to beat a good getaway when we get discovered. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's the main ramp. You know what? Give me just a second.
Beep, beep, that sounds like somebody's phone. That buzzing sounds like feedback happening. That was probably my headset. I went out of range of my receiver. I am going to... Oh, that's not me, though. You're right. Maybe that something was else. I was turning off the vibration thing on my phone. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, while we're sitting here talking, I'm going to try to get that map up. All right, so John, you're gonna try to uh, serotipus. Uh, I can't even say that word tonight. It's too late. Serotipus. Sneakily. Sorry, <laughs> I can't. I can't even say it. All right. Um, you ruined it for yeah, us too. And that's nice that's the, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, sneakily, in uh, get that. Um, Didn't you say there were two maintenance robots? Yeah, there are two maintenance robots. I'm just going to try to get camera and microphone on each of them somewhere. I planted on each of them. Okay, so go ahead and give me a technician roll. Thirty-three. All right, you successfully attached it to the uh, first one, and you did okay. it without him noticing. Cool. You want to try again? Yep. Go ahead. Uh-oh, 58. All right, 58, <laughs> and what is your... Let's see, I'm technician level... I think you're level uh, two or three, aren't you? Two. Level two. All right, and what's your intelligence? Uh, 27. <laughs> what was that? 27. Your int is 27. Yeah, well, my, my, my log is 43. Oh, actually, that's, sorry, that's the, the one to use. Okay. Um, all right, so, as you're working on the second one, um, the other guy walks over and goes, what are you working on there? Oh, I've I noticed this on uh, hanging from the from the robot. I was wondering what it was, and it fell right off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you, what do you, what piece are you showing him? <laughs> the microphone. The microphone. That was on there. Yeah. I don't remember that being on there. Uh, maybe it got maybe I don't know. Got tangled up on. I don't know. Okay. What kind of stuff are these guys cleaning anyway? Oh, they do all kinds. Of, I mean, they do everything. Storage room, down in the power plant. Uh, mm -hmm. They do, uh, you know, the barracks, mess hall. So, I mean, they do it. They, they, we run them pretty ragged. <laughs> yeah, he must have, he must have happened to... Get hung up on you know this must have got hung up on him somewhere, probably when he was coming in here. All right, well, that's weird. So he takes the he takes the microphone and he goes, well, hmm, we'll see if anybody's missing it. Oh. 
So you don't get it installed on that one. Well, at least we got one. Yep. So... I'm trying to get this map, so I'm half distracted here. Uh, all right, so you uh, here we go. Hmm. Okay, just a second. Um, he tells me that just having the one can get a good map. Is that what we're waiting on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're waiting on the download from that. Wait, where did it go? All right, fine. Sounds like someone's failing his tech skill besides but, just me. Yeah. You should really say something to your daughter about not finishing that map and uploading it for you. <laughs> yeah. So actually, the problem was I had to turn off all of her <laughs> edits <laughs> <laughs> before I export it. Because. Um, all right. So we're getting closer now. The, uh, all right, so while you're doing that, Dole's wandering around, uh, and, uh, someone catches him being lazy and decides to put him to work. So he <laughs> just, <laughs> he's like, come I'm with me. <laughs> the, uh, I, I like form a hole somewhere in the middle of my face and put my finger in there and. Start miming humans. Start miming humans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he says we've got to run down to the uh, the power plant and uh, change out some filters. So you're coming with me to help. And uh, okay. He. Uh, they grab the. Uh, He goes, the ground car can make it most of the way, but uh, the last little bit we got to walk. Um, actually, that's not true. The ground car can make it the whole way. Otherwise, how would they have gotten the uh, stuff down there in the first place? So as you as you start going down the vehicle, the uh, um, you go past the the one storage shed that's by the barracks and behind that there's a cave entrance um that goes further in and you go in and it uh splits to the right and left and you guys take the right fork the and it's lit the right fork is lit there's lights along the ceiling um and uh, you start going down and it goes back quite a ways and as you it, and it's it's sloped downwards, um, just subtly. It's not like a steep slope, but um, it. Uh, all right, let me. I've almost got the map up. And then I can just show you. Oh, 
this is what I get for not doing it in advance. Okay, here we go. So here is the base. So I will walk you guys through it. So this is the slope. Can you guys all see that? Yeah. You all see, I'll, I'll, I'll see the map? It's kind of a yes. big map. All right. Um, a map. It's a map. All right, so um, we have, there's this dashed line at the bottom is a fence, uh, and everything is labeled. There's the gatehouse, some guard towers. This garage here outside is where they keep their air car. Um, this is a slope downward into the cave. Um, so there you see the scale. Um, so here's the barracks where your rooms are the mess hall and conference rooms. This is the tech room. Uh, this is Cassandra's apartment back there. She's got her own little area. And the power station is way back along there at the top. So you're going down this long path. Okay, uh, I'm gonna text everybody that I found a spike trap. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in that one. <laughs> yeah, apparently my daughter uh, put the label on on the wrong layer there. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently there's a spike trap down there. Um, I'll have to post the the uh, decorated one that she did later. So, but as as you're going down, you see these side passages off, like here. And here and they are not illuminated you just they go off into the darkness you see a little bit of ways down them you see there's a branch but um, the uh, you don't uh, you don't go down there and so you drive down to the power station and uh, you get out and it looks like it's a geothermal um, setup it's definitely warmer down where you're at, down there. And you go in and, you know, there's pumps and whatever there. There's a turbine in there uh, generating power. Um, and there's some filters that uh, you, uh, there's a bypass and you, you bypass some, some system, some, it's water. And uh, pull the filters out, water splashes around a little bit. You put the new ones in and, and set it all back up. Uh, it takes you, you know, an hour or so to, to do all the work down there. So is there anything you want to do while you're down there? Or anything you want to... Hmm. It's just you open this up. Get, uh, if you try to place charges on the uh, station, so I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that. No, I'll poke around to see where I could, but I'm not going to do anything right now. I'm 
obviously not walking around with a bunch of grenades on me or anything. Right. So, yeah. And I'll just continue being like a typical Dralazite, you know, like go over and put my hand on some something and act like I'm sucking on it or whatever and other weird kind of stupid humor so that I can look around things and stuff, play with stuff and stack rocks and, you know. But meanwhile, check out where I could put something or, you know, look to see if there's anything that'll prevent me from sneaking back here later. Um, uh, let's see. Do you have a technician skill? No, I don't really. Okay. All right. Go ahead and make a roll. Huh. Thirteen. All right. So, um, it's not like they're hiding or anything, but there definitely are security cameras um, in the area. So you see them. Uh, there's there's one in the room that yeah, looks like detective skill could get used on that. Exactly. Um, uh, there's also you also notice as you're going back out. There's one uh, that sits uh, right here on the map. Mm -hmm. That looks at the outside of the building. Okay. Click that again. Oh, right here. Um, okay. That, that looks at, in far enough. Okay. Oh, okay. That looks at the front of the building. Basically, it's kind of like the entrance from the the passageway uh, down. But it, it watches the outside of the building. So you notice there's at least those two security cameras that monitor this area. Uh, okay. So I stop. I look up. I stick my finger in what my ear might be, and I try pushing something out the other side of my head like my finger's going through. All right. <laughs> Make a face and then keep walking. <laughs> so so they're not like hidden or anything. They're, they're actually fairly obvious. Um, it's not, it, They're just there as a, as a precaution uh, more than anything. It's not like they're trying to catch people. So, um, so you spend your time down there. Um, do you want to talk to the guy you're with at all? Uh, I don't know. I'll just say, hey, you know, I used to, uh, when I was younger and walking about, was all interested in, in power and things like that. How many uh, mega SEU come out of that thing? He goes, oh, it, it's not a big generator. Uh, it's a... Uh, oh. Ask me, I have to pull up the numbers. <laughs> it is a it's a type it's a type two generator. Uh which you can probably tell. So yeah, we we, we, we generate about uh eight hundred and fifty SDU an hour out of this. Or we can. We don't pull that much. But, so if I plug my Chronicom directly into that, it would give me a buzz, right? <laughs> uh, you can't plug directly into it, but yeah, probably would if you were to rig something up. <laughs> that would definitely give you a buzz. So, and everything around here runs off this thing? Yeah, everything in the base does. And it's all the way back here in this little hole? Yeah, well, that's where the power, that's where the heat source was for it, yeah. So, the heat source? I always thought that that was making the heat. No, we're tapped on a, a geothermal vent underneath it. And What's that... a geothermal vent? <laughs> he proceeds to explain it to you. <laughs> oh, it's for the Earth's farts, huh? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Start, I'll continue heading back, doing some of that, you know, wiggly stuff, but... All right. So, yeah, okay. and, and you can see as you're going back, you can see the power lines running back up through the cavern. You probably noticed them driving down, too. But, uh, yeah, it is, it is uh, strung out. That's just where they found the, a way to put the power in. So. All righty. OK, 
Okay, so I just kind of play it cool. How All narrow right. is the passage at this point right here? Why am I not making my... There we go. You get a long click. Um, I realize I drew it too narrow. It's probably at least... Um, it's it's wide enough that the ground car can drive down there. So it's okay. it's, it's wider than a vehicle. So um, there's no great pinch point. No, there's not not really. Um, there there, there, there were there. places... As, as you start looking for that, you realize that this has been... Um, dug or blasted out in places there's some places where it looks like natural cave wall and there's other places where it looks like it's been worked to make it wider what um, about cables and stuff bringing all the power out they're suspended all along above the head. along the ceiling yep okay so Alrighty. yeah and then they run up and come out and then fan out to the various buildings in the base All right. Okay, John, how do you want, what is your camera and microphone going to be transmitting to? <sighs> Hadn't thought that far ahead. Um, probably, well, let's see, it could be transmitting to my Chronicom, but I wouldn't want it to be just, like, live, I, I, can it have, streaming. like, its own unique channel on my Chronicom so that when I'm ready to look and listen, I can Yeah, you can do on? that. The Chronicoms okay. have multiple channels on them, so. Yeah. So that, you know, when, when I suspect i won't get caught i can kind of peek at whatever so it's, it's just it's doing. just transmitting and then you can look at it whenever you want to yeah okay i'll have to figure out something better you know once everyone's back and i can get suggestions <laughs> i don't i don't have like a computer i could hook it to <laughs> nope there's one in the conference room <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> so I can stand in front of the monitor or the camera for him and <laughs> funny shapes are in my mood today. <laughs> Good point. That, okay. That's that's Somebody that's something. That's intuition, not logic, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Still, 43. That was the one bad roll when I was generating my character. I was like, oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, John spends the most of the morning working in the tech shop on the robots and almost gets them all installed. But the second one he gets caught doing the... Uh, and... Dole gets roped into lots of little odd jobs like the filter down at the power plant and and uh, some stuff like that. Uh, and a little bit after lunchtime, the explorers come rolling back in, and there's so now there's the your explorer and the ground car and and two additional explorers uh, parked there in that center area. So yeah, this area right here on the map is basically where they park the vehicles, just kind of in between all the buildings um, there in the cave. So um, they get back, and uh, the crew that was on the Explorer on the vehicles comes into, the lunch, into lunch and get a late lunch. And uh, a lot of the other people drift in and to talk to them and see if they, anything exciting happened. And uh, while you're all there, um, Mac, uh, if you remember Mac, he's the uh, he, he's the guy for that was uh, hit by the laser blast that had the albedo screen. Um, uh, his real name is uh, Gary, 
but he goes by Mac. Everybody calls him Mac. He comes in. He says, all right, well, since everybody's here, I don't have to go track you down. He goes, we've got another job. Uh, we'll be, now that we've got these, got the explorers, we'll be uh, headed out in the morning. Uh, we've got a, there'll be a, a small convoy of uh, six ground transports. We'll be here in the morning. Actually, they'll be here later tonight. They'll be ready to go in the morning. Um, and we will meet them down. We will meet them up. Meet up with them in town, and we'll be escorting them uh, down to. Now I forgot the name of the town. There it is to Tuckerville, which is uh, it's a long haul. It's about 10, 11 hours uh, of driving. Did you say Tuckerville. Tucker. Tucker. T o o k e r. So I'm going to give you guys a new map. Um. Here I is. was picking on your Utah there. Yeah, I know you were. Uh, Tuckerville. All right, so here is the current campaign map, and I've drawn, a, I've expanded a little bit. So there's Ooh, the ground got pretty, and uh, the yellower roads. Um, so you're here in Reesdale, and your destination is down there at the bottom of the map. And uh, so you'll you'll pass through Braylon's Rest, but this is and this is about an 11 hour drive. So it, we're going to be doing it in uh, one long run. Uh, we'll we'll stop for a little bit in Braylon's, but uh, for the most part, this should be a long drive. Uh, they'll offload. That's like Baker on yeah. the way to L.A. Right. Yep. <laughs> It's more like Las Vegas is about where Braylon's is from here to Vegas, here to L.A. Maybe not quite, but... Uh, I got a question. Does, yeah. Is that Hook, does it say Hookerville or Tookerville? Tookerville. All right. It was, yeah, it's kind of like the other place that I was saying earlier and Tuila all mixed together. <laughs> so... Um, but you wind through the mountains for this first part, and then you hit this. This is kind of a desertish, drier area. It's in the lee of the mountains, so it doesn't get a lot of moisture. And then Tuckerville's right down at the, or the mountains end, and south of there is more plains, um, more how many, open. How many kilometers is that? Because are we going to have to stop uh, and, and recharge the? Uh, no, floors? you'll recharge overnight in Tuckerville. You got you got okay. plenty of it's six hundred or so kilometers. Okay. Um, so uh, no, you you don't have to worry about the range. Um, and there will be the all three explorers will be going. Um, but we're we're taking there'll be four people per explorer. Uh, uh, we can trade off driving and uh, riding shotgun, but we'll be escorting. Uh, six ground trucks along the way. So, and he, he calls off um, names. He goes, okay, so in the first Explorer, we've got, uh, I'll, I'll be in that one. We've got Marilyn, uh, Wes, and uh, we'll take uh, Rydney, you'll be in that one with us. Then uh, Hoyt will be driving the second uh, Explorer. Uh, Zolke will be manning the gun on that one. We've got Vance, who will be uh, riding along there. And Dole, you'll be in that Explorer. Then uh, Chikar will be driving your, his Explorer. We'll have um You mean Chicheka? Yeah Chicheka. So all this time? Yeah, you're all going this time. Chicheka okay. will be driving, Chikara will you'll be you'll be manning the gun. Um and then I've got and uh Gilbash and Wes will be uh riding along on that one. So yeah. 
uh, get some rest. It's gonna be a long day tomorrow. Actually, the next two days. I don't know. It's uh, just general supplies. It's a shipment down to the PGC uh, Pan Galactic facility down there in Tuckerville. Um, and you guys know that uh, Tuckerville, one of the things, it's a, it's mostly a mining community, um, but also is a spaceport. There's a small spaceport there because uh, there is a uranium mine there in the mountains nearby that uh, so that they mine uranium uh, refine it into fuel pellets for starships and so they they have a regular uh, shuttle space shuttle that comes and goes to haul that up to the station in orbit um, and both PGC and Strill have operations in the town um, is it possible that uh, before I go to bed tonight, I can rig up a sort of a retransmitter that, that can actually reach my uh, Chronicom from, from here? I can you know, hide it under my bed or something? Uh, well, you so would be able I... to hide it under your bed. You'd have to mount it up outside because you remember you're down in a cave and you would need a radio phone to do it. Uh because of the distance involved. So I'm not going to be able to see anything that's going on back at the caves while we're gone. Set up a recorder. Um, I, uh, when you were... Who was it that was exploring the supplies over there? The, you know? That would be, be Rimini, but he just barely got back. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, did you happen to notice anything that could be used to set up a recording device? If I do anything about technology, I would say yes. <laughs> um, I just don't have a part. Wait, er, what are the chances that the parts are there in the tech room? And then, the, what are the odds that I can somehow smuggle them out? That would be tough. The odds of them being there are very high. You, you having spent the day in there, you could probably cobble together something uh, from what's there to make some sort of recording device to, to okay. record the transmissions. Um, okay. You would need to make a roll to actually make it, to construct it, because there isn't just a recording receiver with the recorder on it that you could grab um, and and then you'd have to get it back to your room and conceal it okay John you are really really hard to hear there's a lot of static noise yeah I, I rolled a 50 okay yeah I saw that um, okay that's just enough Ooh. Um, to build That's it. all that counts, though. <laughs> so you get it constructed. Um, and uh, I want you to make another roll. Oh. Okay. I'm going to the brig. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Hey guys, I'm here. All right, are you back? Oh, yeah. that's Angel. Hey, hey, welcome. You're just in time. Oh, cool. We got the blood stopped. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Don't worry, you're not dead yet. <laughs> They're just yanking your chain. All right. So. Uh, they went and picked up a couple new explorers, and um, what? We got more? well, the, the the mercenary company was replacing the ones you guys blew up. Um, oh yeah. And and then uh, you just got assigned an escort job. So in the morning you'll be headed out uh, driving. Uh, when you get onto roll twenty, you'll see the map. You're headed from Reesdale down to that town at the bottom of the map. 
Um, uh, okay. Well, I'm not. I, I'm not home. I, I, I oh, okay. My phone. All right. So you home. you've got about a ten or eleven hour drive ahead of you tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, John, you get it back to your room. I'm losing you guys. I think. Are you? We can hear you just fine. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you, brother. All right. So, you get. Uh, John, you get it back to your room, and you stash it away somewhere uh, that you, you think it's uh, concealed and uh, can can record while you're gone. So you guys are going to be gone for a couple days. Um, We're toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to find that, that roll. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good, yeah. Any of you uh, want to do anything else the rest of the afternoon? No. I'm going to mix it the vehicles in tip-top shape. Okay. So, yeah, you get back from your drive earlier in the morning picking up the other one, other explorers, and you, you go over the vehicle and, and check that it's all working and, and get plugged in to charge um, so it's fully charged for the, the drive tomorrow. And awesome. uh, don't have any problems. Everybody else is definitely interested in the new vehicles. They're all checking them out. And, uh, you notice they're the same model as yours. Um, uh, slightly newer. Uh, yours is probably a couple years old but at this point. But uh, these ones are... are the battle survivor. Yeah. Uh, this, the, these ones are basically the same model. Uh, just you know, two year refresh uh, on uh, on that, and they're and they're brand new. I mean, they've been driven from Point True to Reesdale. <laughs> oh wow! And that's it. It's the only miles they've got on them. They were they were brand new, and uh, so uh, you spent the afternoon uh, getting everything stowed, ready to go. Um, later in the day, after dinner, he. Uh, Mac pulls in everybody that's going to go on the trip. He says, "All right, um, uh, we're issuing everybody uh, rifles. Uh, so uh, you know, I'm hearing something now. Oh, good. So it's it's after dinner, and uh, Mac going around. Okay, everybody going on this on this run. Uh, we're issuing rifles." to everyone so uh pick a rifle you're good with from the armory and which is in the storage uh yeah it, there's a, there's a there's a small weapon storage area in one of the storage sheds and he takes you all over there and if you don't have a a weapon for your primary weapon skill a, a rifle weapon um you can add that to your character sheet and five clips but if we already have a weapon, we just add the five clips? Just add the five clips, yeah. If you already have a rifle. But everybody should have a rifle for this trip. But, and you hear some, like, you know, cheering. Uh, not not really cheering, but people are kind of pretty good because somebody, somebody makes a comment and says, well, I guess uh, the one good thing came out of that, uh, your botch job, Mac. And he scowls at them. Um... And as as they're handing out the weapons, uh, they're not taking any chances anymore. <laughs> I got good. All right. So unless unless you want to do anything else, uh, we'll fade to black and wake up in the morning. Um, I'm good for fading. Okay. All right. That? I don't know. Love me. It's Eric knocking stuff over on his computer. 
No, that's <laughs> get in the room, but yes. Hello. 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 All right, so um, angels, just so you know, uh, yeah. you will be driving with um. Let's see who's your who's going to be your gunner. Uh, was going to be oh it was Chikara. Chikara will be Chikara will be manning the gun on yours, and then you'll have two of the mercenaries um, riding along, and they can drive and man mount you know man the gun as well, so that you guys you don't have you don't have to drive the whole eleven hours. You can swap out. Um, and there's a town uh, about halfway, not quite halfway, um, between where Restell here, where you're at, and your destination, um, that you guys will stop and like get lunch and stretch uh, stretch, stretch your legs a little bit. But uh, otherwise, uh, it's 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 down. one long push uh, to get this down down there. So. Is, what are we? What are, what are we? What are we escorting? What are we taking? Uh, it is general supplies for a uh, for a pan galactic. Um, you'll be transporting uh, cargo containers. You don't know exactly what's in it. That's all they tell you. Is general supplies. Uh, in the town you're headed to, there's a mining operation. Uh, both Streel and Pan Galactic have mines down there. And you're just taking some supplies down to the Pan Galactic outfit. Yeah. So, all right. Well, morning comes around. Everybody gets breakfast. Uh, you realize that with everybody going on this trip, there's probably going to be less than a dozen people left back at the base. Yeah, but we're all going on this trip too, so. <laughs> yep. So yeah, but then we could, we could call Streel and tell them to attack the base while we're gone, and we look innocent, and they would come out with all the stuff. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we should do. Streel's our mother corporation. They're our baby. They're our daddies. So, yeah, I think we should do that. Well, let's... <clears throat> I don't know how we're going to get a communication out without people noticing, though. Oh, yeah. All right. So let, let's talk about that now. So what kind of what do you want to what kind of message do you want to send out? I assume you'll be looking for the opportunity to send it um, while you're driving. But what message do you want to send? Uh, minimum security. Uh, at Pirate Base. There are R2 facility. It's the mercenary base. Yeah. Minimum security, R2 base, uh, out on supply run. Take advantage. Okay. Yeah, take advantage of the situation. Can we give them, do they know the location? Okay. Yeah, it's public it? knowledge. Oh, okay. Yeah, the mercenaries aren't trying to hide. They're just a mercenary company. Um, and we need to, because I don't think we've informed them, we need to inform them that these are the people that attack the ship. Oh, man, yeah. We didn't tell them that yet. I think you guys knew that. Oh, yeah, I guess so. That's how you found them in the first place, because you interrogated their two people you caught. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Do you want to try to transmit anything you found out about motives or any of that? Or are you just going to tell them that the base is empty well, or mostly want empty? Short, so that way the transmission doesn't get picked up. Okay. So, Sounds good. Yeah, that we can put on the report. All right. So okay. I'll. Uh, We'll, we'll keep that in mind as we're going through uh, this trip, if an opportunity comes up. Because right now you guys are spread out between all three explorers. Um, 
and you know, it's not something you can yeah, just right the do world. really easily. So, um, all right. So uh, you you head out and you start out. There's kind of a bit of a open plain. You're kind of skirting along the edge of a, a spur of the mountain range. Um, as you, you 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 start off headed west and then loop around and start headed south and then back up a little bit southeast. Um, uh, and you're driving along. Things are going. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's fairly pretty country, actually. Um, it's the, the the drive is not uh, unenjoyable, or it is enjoyable. It's not. Oh, okay, so it's an easy cruise. Yeah, it's, it, you're driving on a on a paved road, um, and and you get up in the morning. You, you first head into town, and uh, there at the at the main. Uh, in hotel in town, there's six big um, hover, uh, ground transports. So, um, and uh, they all have the Pan Galactic logo emblazoned on their side. And uh, you meet up with them, and uh, Matt goes up, and, uh, goes in to the uh, the hotel, to the lobby. And he's in there for a few minutes, and then he comes back out, and uh, a dozen people come out, and they split up into pairs, and eat, uh, two of them get in each of the vehicles. Um, and uh, they, what races uh, are besides the Yazarian Gunner, my home, my friend? What races are coming in with us? Uh, with you, you have um, a two humans, both males. Ah, okay. Who am I? Uh, yeah, there's three cars. Yeah, there's three vehicles. There's three explorers. The the one that you're that Mac that the leader is in. There's Tim, a human, uh, another human male, another human female, and uh, Rimini is in that one. And then, in fact, I shouldn't write this down so I remember. Um, and then. Uh, Zulki and Dole are in the second one with a Thank two you. other human males. All there is is humans with me. What is Zulki? Zulki is a... A human, yeah. <laughs> I'm the only drowsy that amongst humans. Yep. Okay, Dude, you're going to collect all kinds of humor. My arms get really <laughs> long. They hang down to the floor. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, no, you can get them swapping jokes, and then you go home and be able, be able to hey, get rich. Uh, Dralazites can do fart jokes really good because they can fart with both arms at once. <laughs> I take that back. I there's shake a, their whole body at the same time. There's uh, an angel. There is, it's, not, it's not two human males. It's a human male <laughs> and a Zerian female in, oh. your, in yours. Oh. All right, well, listen, you don't need to shoot off the gun up there and shooting off nothing else, all right? <laughs> hey, I'll trade we'll, I'll, I'll trade you. You guys can take one of our guys and, and, and we'll, we'll have the Azurian female with us. <laughs> I think you should do what we're assigned. Yeah, you, you don't get Oh, uh, <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, so you 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 go out and you're you're traveling. Uh, they he initially has uh, one of the explorers out in front, one in the middle between. In, you know, th so an explorer, three trucks, an explorer, three trucks, and an explorer. So that's that's kind of how you're traveling uh, down the road. Um, and uh, so you have several hours of driving if you want to talk with uh, the mercenaries in your group, in your vehicle with you. 
uh, try to engage them in conversation. Uh, yeah. You can try to do that. Um, we didn't get much. What's the terrain look like outside? So you're it's you're basically skirting along the edge of a mountain range. Um, so it's it's hilly and mountains to your uh, left, and then um, more open plains to your right. Uh, at least until you get to Braylon's down to Braylon's Rest, which is the halfway town, and then you come down out of the mountains into a more scrubby desert type area for a while uh, till you get to Tuckerville. And then just beyond Tuckerville, it opens up into like grasslands and Great Plains type terrain. But you're not going that far, so. So I start talking to him about that 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 Hollowvid show about the 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 dog and and the the bird and how the dog always gets hurt trying to catch the bird, and then I start forming different shapes with my hands like anvils and hammers and things, and I start you know using that as an opportunity to make physical contact with them enough that they start thinking, hey, you know, this guy just touches us a lot. Okay. Make a and joking, you know, because it's out right. there. I mean, look, there's a rock out there, you know, and I want you to make a personality roll. Let's see if I tick these guys off. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Zol when, when Zolki gets back, he can tell you what how he feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find yourself stuffed in the food box. 15. Hey. You, you get, oh my goodness! You you get chuckles and uh, they they seem to warm up to you a little bit and they they uh, you you get along just fine with them. Okay. Not bad for a drill set. <laughs> so the two in with you are Hoyt Vold. He's the guy that um, led the group back to get the explorers in the first place. He's actually driving uh, to start and then. Uh, another man named Vance. So, and uh, you, as you're talking to him, you find out that uh, Vance, uh, actually, I think both of these guys were um, no, Hoyt wasn't, but Vance was actually also on the uh, ill-fated expedition uh, to the uh, ship, the downed ship. Is he in the car that I'm in? Yeah, he's in the car that you're in. I say, hey, you know, I'm not, I, what happened up there? You know, moment of seriousness here. Well, he, he starts telling you uh, the story and... and he relates basically uh, the same story that the other guys got earlier. They got hired. Um, they were up at Novin's Mill at the north end uh, of the continent. Uh, and the uh, they had dropped out. They had, they had been hired to take some stuff out there. So they dropped it off and were headed back. And they got a call from uh, Commander Reese that... Uh, They'd been offered a job. Apparently, a ship had gone down. Uh, a Strill ship had gone down uh, nearby where you, where they were, and they were to go pick up the cargo and bring the cargo back, and only the cargo. And uh, so, so a little bit more serious there. It's like, does this kind of thing happen to us a lot? No. Nah. Like, gonna happen on this trip? Not probably not. I mean, we're we're this this job's escort the transports down and back, so uh, we we won't be able to get diverted. We don't have any cargo trucks with us, so that time we had our cargo vehicles with us, so we we were able to, to haul stuff off. If they, um, we don't, I mean, that was kind of unusual in that. There was a ship crash that we were going to pick over, but we get sent to pick up stuff all the time. Um, well, not all the time. Every once in a while. 
Uh, but it's not out of the, it's not off the beaten path. We've done it before, um, you know. And sometimes it involves a little bit of a tussle. Uh, we didn't expect to tussle at that one because it was a crash. We were expecting a crash ship. We thought there might be bodies laying around, but apparently we were told the ship came down pretty hard. Uh, apparently it didn't come down as hard as people believed. So back a little bit. It, so it, was it like zombies? Zombies on the ship or something? No, no, they weren't zombies. We never got to the ship. Uh, it opened fire on us. Apparently it had a functioning uh, laser weapon. And then there was a, a Strill uh, Explorer there with uh, at least someone running the gun and driving it. Hmm. I think we got the driver, though. Some bitch here, bitch, bitch. Sit down kind of between the two front seats, kind of just moving myself in, and I, I'm just going to kind of huddle up a little bit and hold my grenades a little bit like I'm a little nervous. And... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, uh, we're driving. I want to start asking a few questions to these the guys that are with us about okay. the uh, good looking Azurian uh, in the other vehicle. She seeing anybody, or you know, well, not in the group. Oh, my man's macking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, getting some background information, that's all. Yeah. I know you want to hit that background information. <laughs> oh, you mean Gilbish? Yeah, she's. Uh, yeah. She seen anybody? No. She. Uh, yeah. She tends to keep to herself. Uh, there's uh, a couple other Uzerians, uh, but they're off at the other detail right now, so. Uh, I'm surprised. You know, well, not surprised. She's she's really not that. She's not the most social type. Ah. I, I, she. Uh, I think her story is. Hello. I think that was the buzzer that you know bleeped out what he was about to say. Um, <laughs> didn't have that much detail. <laughs> I think she was about to get with you. Oh, wait, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with the other Yazirians gone, this, this, this may bode well for me here. <laughs> oh, you never, you, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. They they seldom resi they're seldom able to resist a great guy like me. I think I'll spend some time up top with the gun, making sure my hair gets nice and windblown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else wanna talk around? Well, I might not want to. Uh I'll speak to the human. He's probably in the car in the seat next yeah, to me then. Probably. So, so I'll ask him, well, how long have you been with this group? How long have you been working with Pangalactic? Oh, I don't work with I mean I work with we do jobs for P PGC all the time. I've been with uh, the Reddies, uh the Resolutes. Uh for how has it been let's see about two, almost two years now. Uh, in fact, yeah, it'll be two years next month. So, um, but, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of jobs for PGC, but they're probably only about, I don't know, 40% of what we do. A lot of it's for local companies on here on Streel. Just, I mean, the one thing we don't do is Streel work. Or sorry, here, here on Pale. The one thing we don't do is Streel work. Commander Reese no. just doesn't take jobs from them. Mm -hmm. oh, all right and the benefits are good working with them they, they look out for you guys oh yeah i mean no complaints i mean other than this, this 
the people getting hurt on that last mission was just that was very unusual. That's kind of been a bit of a downer for the whole whole group. I mean, I mean, we know it's comes with the job because we, you know, we we go in with we go in packing and we have to, you know, sometimes we have to use the weapons. But that was just it was crazy. It was just not what everybody was expecting. So that's not normal. No, when you not go against all. drill. No, okay. we don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't often do. Usually, it's you know, a raid here or go intercept something that they wanted to get. It's kind of uh, often it's a race between us and someone from their group. And but oh, okay, yeah, it, it doesn't usually come to pitch fights like that one was. That was definitely out of the norm. Out out of the norm. I holler down and say, hey, any chance we're going to get attacked by great big monsters so that I can shoot them all and save the day? Roll your dice. <laughs> Did you jinx us? 30? <laughs> all right. So one of the things they're doing is they're having you rotate who's in front and who's in the middle and and all that. And um, you're about an hour out of Braylon's rest at this point, maybe only a half hour out. And uh, you notice you come over a hill, and uh, off in the distance, um, there's you know probably probably about a, a kilometer or so ahead of you. Um, there's a, a bit of a gorge with a bridge over it, and there's a river running underneath underneath it, and you see something huge and massive laying on the bridge. Is it that sense? Wait, what does it look like? <laughs> yes, Angel. Oh, it is. You realize as you start to get closer. Um, you realize that it is a slither. It is an old Sathar attack creature that is... He looked familiar. Yeah, you saw one <laughs> on your way to the downed ship. I remember him. Um, and this one is laying right across your road. Okay, well, Do I will get stop. shoot at it? Uh, <laughs> yes, you you're do. going well, to I have stop. to. Oh, I so, <laughs> Yeah, slither. So you're about half a kilometer. Away, you're about a kilometer away from it at this point. You notice it just because you came over the rise, and um, there was you could see a bit of a ways, and uh, you could see the bridge, and it just seems to be laying up on the bridge. So so this thing is twenty meters long. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it dwarfs, it's, you know, it's the length of four or five of your vehicles <laughs> in the end. <laughs> mm -mm. I wonder if we could attract it towards us off the bridge. Okay, so we have how many vehicles with us? Three? There are three explorers and six ground trucks. And right now, you're driving, you guys are in front, Chikara's or Cheka's vehicles in front. Then there are three trucks, and then the um, Max truck, the one with the heavy laser, uh, is in the middle. And then the trailing car that Zolki and Dole are in um, are in, in the rear. And so your Explorer and the one in the rear both have machine guns, and the one in the middle has a heavy laser. And, so those uh, guys in the back don't exactly see this. No, you guys don't see this yet. This is just this is this is really just John uh, Ch Chikara on top of his explorer because he's up on the gun mount, and so he's up. Mm. And they come. You come over the rise and you see it up there. And it it takes you a minute to realize what it is because there's just this lump in the road. This but then you realize uh, what it is, and it's this large slither. Okay, I get on okay. the radio to the other two I guys. I get on the Chronicom and say, hey, boys, yeah. get ready. We're going to have some fun. 
<laughs> and Matt comes on and says, what are you talking about? Report. I describe what I see on the bridge. Okay. Let's see, it's on the bridge, huh? All right, we're going to need to uh, take this sucker out. Yeah. Well, <sighs> we should take it away from the bridge to make sure we don't destroy the bridge while shooting at it. How fast do they move? Uh, they're not very fast. They, they move hmm. very slowly. We should probably shoot shoot at him kind of early to get his attention, get him to come at us so that he comes off the bridge. I think that's a good idea. I agree. Okay. So, uh, Rini, you're, you have the beam weapon skill, right? Yes. All right, oh, so darn. You're, you're Manny... Rini? <laughs> You're manning the heavy laser on this that explorer. Um, since Zulki's not here, Eric, I think you have a projectile weapon skill, right? Yeah, I do. You'll be manning the machine gun on the tail explorer. Um, Mac orders. He says, "All right, I want the uh, explorer's fan out in front." Uh, Actually, the... wait, wait. I'm I'm beam only. Oh, you're only beam. Okay. Yeah. All right, never mind. Well, then we'll just, you can roll for Zulki. Um, so, uh, he orders the three explorers out in front, and he, hold, he tells the, the ground trucks to, to wait behind. Uh, well, while he, and he, you know, he says, let's, okay, let's go deal with this thing. Oh, Lord. Mm. So, how close do you want to get? <laughs> so, well, what's the maximum range of our um, machine gun? So, your machine gun has a range. You could. It is at extreme range right now for the yeah, machine gun. That's the reason I rolled the dice. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is at long range for the laser. And extreme range for the machine gun. So John opens up a burst, and you don't hit it. That's uh, okay. Get his attention. But but you're not as far off as you would expect, <laughs> 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 given the range. It takes a minute, and then you see little puffs of dirt pop up. You pr you probably came up about fifty meters short. Not bad. So, um, so uh, anyone else shooting? Uh, how far are we? You're you're a, you're just under a kilometer away at this point. Nine hundred and eighty yeah, meters. <laughs> yeah, I could. I theoretically could hit, but there's no point. Yeah. So. Uh, we got to get like within a hundred yards of this thing. Five is as as low as the heavy laser goes. Any kind of rockets <laughs> or, or uh, see, I was I just trying to. Well, you, you, you guys get, have a... attention so it would come towards us so that we could it would get off the bridge. You do have a grenade mortar in your, in the back of your explorer. Yeah, but it's not mounted, and we have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can stop and get out. <laughs> it has the same range as the laser. So, um, yeah, so the laser can be set from 5 to 20. Well, why don't we just, uh, if we want to get the thing's attention, why not just dial up, uh, hit it with a mortar? Well, because we want to get it off the bridge first. No, that's true. You probably don't want to... Yeah, we don't want to damage the bridge Blow either. up the bridge. <laughs> it's a long way around if you blow up the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I guess I'll fire the laser just to get its attention. Okay. Make a roll. You have a minus 40. Yeah, I know. So I <laughs> okay. have a 5% chance. All right. Who knows? Um... <laughs> nope, you miss. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. All right. So. Come on, uh, man. <laughs> so you have that laser is hooked up to a pair of battery in the back. So you have 500 SEUs. Okay. Um, I think that's right. Hold on. Let me double check. It may only be 250. Yeah, no, it's 500. So yeah, you All have right. 500 SUs available on that laser. And then um, the machine gun that Zulki's firing has 300 rounds, so 30 shots, uh, which I think is basically what yours has, John. However, I, you, you would yeah. know more what yours has. So um, just keep track of your ammo. Uh, okay. Does it look like I got the uh, attention of the No, nah, you went really wide. Okay, but did I get the attention? Uh, y you think it might have gotten its attention, uh, but you're not sure. It, you're, you're far enough away that if it's moving, it's not moving very much. Uh. So, how close do you want to approach? Do you just want to keep shooting as you approach and like, take off the distance? Or do you want to get to a certain range before you start shooting again? I'm not going to bother until I get about 100 yards or 100 meters. Sorry. Okay. Okay, well, why don't we pull up to where we can, where we're all in, in like normal range? Mm hmm. <laughs> and. If it hasn't done anything yet, then we shoot. All right. Yeah. Well, except that we need him to get off the bridge. Yeah, so we just want to... we, we got to shoot ahead of time. To... we got to get a lucky shot that gets his attention. Really, we I don't know that we want to worry too much about taking it out. We just need to get through there. Yeah, we just want it off the bridge. Let's just, um, um, can we stop and try to fire a mortar on this side of the bridge? You could. You, I mean, you could aim for it by it instead of trying to hit it. What if we shot under the bridge? I don't know about that. Yeah, a bad roll would destroy the supports of the bridge. Or could damage them anyway. Oh, you're on. Sh I mean, yeah. worst, at worst, you've got a frag grenade. <laughs> Looks like a pretty sturdy bridge. So it, it can it can withstand a frag grenade. <laughs> How good's your your skill with the mortar? The mortar is a gyro Mine, no. is a gyro jet weapon skill. Who's got gyro jet? I do not. Uh, Jill has it. She's not here, though. Uh, but I'm still driving forward to it. Yeah. The Zulki has You know what? That's what I'm looking. Yeah. Nope. Uh, Shahuz and, and, and Jill do. Okay, I tell you what. Then let's just... I mean, we got all these SEUs for that laser. Why don't we try yeah, to use no. that to to attract attention? All right. Just right. roll better this time. Get to 100 <laughs> yards, and maybe we've got a chance. Or 100 say, meters. say, at 500 meters, you only have minus 20. Yeah, but my skill is bad enough that... And then at 100 yards, you only have a minus 10. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. All right. It's a 35% chance to get it. So at, at that range, you're, those, the, la the rifle weapons are also long or medium range, depending on your, on your rifle, but, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a shot here. Okay. Oh, that's a pretty good shot. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. You hit roll a 10 D 10. All right. Well, I mean, if we're this close, I might as well shoot, too. So. Yeah, you have a minus 20 at this range. Oh, and I, I missed. 
I am I am devastated. Let's Zolki get Sish out in there too. Yep, somebody roll for Zolki. <laughs> but he's is back. Zolki here? No, oh is he back? Oh, just in time. Yes, I'm here. Alright, so you guys are you're manning the machine gun on one of the explorers and you are on the map. You guys are about right there. Um, At least I think I missed. 66. You missed. You missed. 50, oh, half, my, yeah. Half yeah, your dex plus your, 10 times your skill plus uh, minus 10% because it's a heavy weapon and minus 20 for distance. So, well, yeah. but, plus, but plus 10 because it's a gigantic, plus 20 because it's a gigantic creature. Um, so you actually have okay. your, your normal roll plus 10. Um, I, and that's true. That? That's true for everybody. Yeah, it, it, missed, it is. It is. I a missed it by six. It's a slither. <laughs> it's a old Southar attack creature from the war. All uh, right. So okay, I'm gonna burst. Go to bed. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot a burst. Yep. And you get given plus burst minus ten because it's a heavy weapon plus twenty. For the size, minus twenty for the distance. So it's basically your skill. It's your your half your dex plus your skill. Yeah, half dex plus skill. Turns out, yeah, yeah, I missed it by sixteen actually. Oh well. No, actually, with a machine gun, it would be plus ten. Your skill, your normal chance to hit plus ten, given all the modifiers. Mm, okay, so, so you missed, I missed it by, by six. six. You just shot right over its head. <laughs> Did you roll 10 d 10? Okay, 4 d 6. I'm still All trying right. to get its attention. <laughs> well, still, yeah, that's attention getting. <laughs> Hopefully. We rolling percentile 100? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah just points? roll. You, you missed. So d, the plus 10 would be with the, on the damage. Uh, or no, plus 10 would be with your skill. So what your skill would be... It's just d 100. Yeah, you just rolled d 100, but he rolled a 97. So he missed too. Um, so your well, your base to hit is thirty. Oh yeah, you definitely got its attention this time. Um, okay. So twenty eight, thirty eight. So your base chance to hit the thirty eight. So you had a forty eight, and you rolled a ninety seven. So yeah, they're on the map, and they're right here on the map. I got my four year old is in with me now because he refuses to go to bed at night. All right, so the thing, it was just laying out. Looks like it was maybe sunning itself on the bridge, soaking up the heat. Um, and uh, it lumbers up onto its legs. So it's this giant centipede-like thing. Um, and it starts walking off the bridge towards you um, very slowly. It's only moving about 10 me meters a turn. So... Uh, and how many meters long is it? It's 20 meters long, and it's 100 meters away from you guys. So it, it's gonna it's gonna take 10 turns to get to us, but we need it to take at least two turns before it dies. <laughs> Probably more than that, because right now it's walking right down the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right on it. How, how, how rugged are these things? Do you guys remember? They're very your, rugged. Your explorers are very rugged. The ground trucks, not as much. <laughs> no, I mean, how, 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 how rugged are these creatures? Oh, these things? Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty yeah. tough from what you know. Okay. Well, let me know when it's time to roll again. <laughs> I'll pop another shot off at it. Okay. And I missed. All right. No, see, yeah. I already tried that number. You need a different one. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Zulki. Go ahead and make your attack roll. Just roll a d100. Oh, All right. John and Zulki both pepper it with their machine guns. Each of you roll 10d10. I think that's what the machine gun is set to, right? Yep. 10d10 for the machine gun. 63. Mmm, 59. Yeah. 
I can't see the roll. Yeah, they rolled a 59. All right, you pepper it with bullets, and it lurches a little bit, and it still keeps lumbering towards you, though. It goes to the trouble. Great. <laughs> Hey, who, well, it's still talking? half on the bridge. <laughs> and left and right is down a gorge. So. Who got the rocket launcher? Yeah, we don't have a rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, we got a mortar. A mortar, yeah. Um, we don't have. The, the, our, our, our gyro jet experts aren't here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. Really. Well, you could try the mortar with a with a negative penalty. Yeah, you just you just have a skill of zero. Hey, I've I've got the machine gun, so someone else. But you you know the rest of y'all can be using your rifles. Am I going to assume that I'm no longer driving forward to the thing? We I, I assume, yeah, yeah we, we assumed you guys stopped. Uh, so you've got your your three uh, explorers. One of them is probably sitting on the road, probably the one with the laser. And the other two with the machine guns have flanked it a little bit. So you all have a clear shot at the, the monster on the bridge. Oh... You know, yeah. it's pretty slow. How about we get Eric to, to go and uh, put a grenade in front of it? <laughs> well, I was thinking a little more than a grenade for him. Maybe well, no, like one of the grenade, grenade shells with a little timer on it and just kind of put it in front of it. Yeah, well, I was just put it on the boat. He, he, well, he was, hey, but he's got some TD-19, doesn't he? Always got TD-19, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Put some grenade shells on, on underneath or on top of some TD-19 and then blow it all up when it gets close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a radio detonator? I think I got some detonators. Yes. No, radio detonator. <clears throat> My personal stash. What's in the, what's the, what do they have in the vehicle? Uh, they don't have anything explosives wise in the vehicle. Just everybody has okay, their I personal some, weapons. I've got some timers. I don't have radio detonators. Do the, I think we're better. I think. But didn't you hmm. earlier that the timers are also radio detonators? I, I did. I reread them that they're not, but I'm going to stick with that. The ones you have are. They can be okay. do timers, or you can set them to receive a signal. Right. Yes. So, let's see. How much TD-19 do I have? Well, while he's doing that, I'll take a shot at the thing. You need to set be it quiet. up as a claymore mine. You either have to be quiet or go. That's a good bed. idea. Yeah, shape it. Uh, I was thinking about shaping it into a man. No, um, <laughs> come eat me. Um, Just how much T twenty eighty and D nineteen are you going to be using here? <laughs> it'd be a very little man. I'm going to use a kilogram of it. There's, I've got two kilograms. Don't forget the blast radius. Shape it into a gopher. <laughs> I was thinking more like uh, um, Men in Black when he's standing there. Eat me! Because that's kind of what Slither reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I take a shot at him? Uh, while All right, so yeah, well, he's... Getting out his charge that he wants to use and go place. Uh, I want to take some of the. You said there was some. Uh, what do you call? Um, I would say a little less than half. Not the 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 mortar rounds. Right. You have your grenades. Couple, right, and then I'm gonna set some mortar grounds on top of the of the or pack the the right the explosive around it so that okay. so that I get multiple effect because I want the the shrapnel and stuff. Right. So you need to make a demolitions roll. Please make that roll once you've walked down there. <laughs> Not right here. Just yeah, saying. Don't <laughs> <laughs> no, play with the explosives in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> <You're>, uh... 
<laughs> okay, kick me out of the vehicle. You're Fine. Uh, you're uh... <laughs> Your, your crew doesn't like share that. your confidence in your abilities. Throw in the T19 <laughs> like it's a pizza here. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's mm. see. It's, I gotta put it dead center of its path, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Alrighty. How far how fast can you move? As fast as any other Dralazite. He can run twice as fast as this thing's currently moving. <laughs> Where's my running? So it may be next turn before he gets where he wants to set the turn. turn. Yep. So, okay. I will do that. I get there. If you're ready for the roll, assuming I'm, I'm in my Actually, place setting the charge. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and give these guys a round because it's going to take you a round to get there. So, or two. How far away from the explorers do you want to be? So right now, there's 90 meters between the monster and the explorer, the slither and the explorers. Um, oh, every all the vehicles are stopped. I'm they're gathering. stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the trucks are further back. They're like 300 meters back. Um, Smart trucks. <laughs> Now, you're so, not putting explosions on the road itself, right? Well, that's where the thing is right now. Well, I thought we were trying to attract it, like, away. Are we using ourselves as bait? No, we're using uh, Eric as bait. Oh, as bait. Eat <laughs> <laughs> me! That's what I was saying. Oh. Eat me. Eat me. <laughs> Go get my gun back. <laughs> Go get my gun back. Exactly. Um, all right. So those of you with, uh, while well, he's he's moving forward, those of you with the machine guns and the lasers can all make another attack roll. All right. My skill in half my ability is forty five, but it's a large. <laughs> this this creature, thing, right? it's a giant creature. You get a plus twenty. Okay, so then I hit. Okay. Even with the range, minus 10. Yeah, you have a minus 10 for range, minus 10 for a heavy weapon, and then... Dang! So, so that cancels out. So basically, it's your skill. Okay, so I, um, I, I did miss. Okay. <laughs> Just barely, though. I missed. John missed. Zolki, you're up. <laughs> Zolki peppers him. Nice shooting. That's what you get for military primary skill area. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll another 10d10. Oh, you did. All right, 56 more. All right. 56. All right, so it is now off the bridge. It's still on the road. Dole, Dole's run, run up. It's still 60 meters away from you, Dole, and it's 80 meters from the... um. It's about the place that I should set it then. Okay. Cause, right? Because it's, it's well, 60 meters from me. I should close the distance a little bit more and then run like figures. <laughs> well, it's off the road now. Maybe. You know, you well, you know, it's on the road, it's but off it's off the bridge. The bridge. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Its tails or its tail end is basically just off the edge of the bridge. Do we have a Do we have a picture to see how this looks? Um, I can find one really quick. I didn't think to prep this. Appreciate it. Yep. It's a giant you, twenty you, uh, foot long uh, centipede with. It, it kind of looks like the centipede from uh, Thunder of the Barbarian. Now, I don't have to think hard to remember that one. Nobody, nobody remembers Thundar? Remember Thundar? Yeah, I was big into Thundar. That, I'm not sure I remember this, the creature. <laughs> Is that the one where the moon was split in half? And... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thundar. Don't, don't go back and rewatch it. It's that's not my... as good as you remember. 
Oh, it's like a, a, a it looks like a centipede movie. with a, a Cthulhu mouth. <laughs> what, what, no, yeah. something like a Cthulhu for a mouth. Yeah. And then it's got like these arms that come off of its head. Yeah, he just uploaded the picture. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. There's a picture. Now I remember. Yeah. That's exactly the, the eat me scene from um, Men in Black. Except for mm -hmm. the tentacles instead of a mouth. But well. And it's huge. Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So yeah. that's what it looks like. Well, let's give oh. it more lead. All right. So, next round. Go. Um, I'm actually gonna have you guys roll roll initiative for this one, just to see. Me? Uh, no, just your uh. Anybody on that side? You guys have a plus seven. You, you, somebody else roll it. I'm actually capable of failing it. <laughs> Let's see, my IM is is five. My, mine's a, yeah. We've got uh, we've got a seven. We've got a couple of us with a seven, but I only rolled a three. That's well, ten. It rolled a four, and it's not very fast. So you guys actually win initiative. Okay, so as you're lining up to make your next shot, you notice that it is starting to veer off to the right. It's not coming straight at you anymore. It might be headed towards the Explorer on the right, which is the one Zulki's in, that's been shooting it. Or it may be just turning to go away, but it's not moving super fast, so you can't quite tell yet. But that's what it's starting to do. Um, it's to go off road, which is a good thing. So it's yep. getting off the road, so I'll go set the... Uh, is it is it come off the edge of the road yet? Well, the front part of it is. Because it would be stupid to put a hole in the road that we need to drive over. Yes, that's why I was hoping we weren't throwing up the boat. So why don't I go off to the shoulder of the road and set my charge? Uh, basically, it's a precaution just in case it heads towards their vehicle. Okay. So I'll you go set it, and then I'll run back um, towards their vehicle it's cover. actually the one you were in, so you're actually on that line, basically where you're at. Okay. So, so you could you I'll could just run, run forward, stop, cover. set it, run back. Okay. There so goes my set. All right, make your roll. Okay. <laughs> That's a pretty good roll. It's sitting there and looks like a little gopher. All right. How much T19 did you use? A whole kilogram. A kilogram. <laughs> and one or two grenades and inside it. Two grenades. Dang, you're going for the jugular on this thing. <laughs> Blow its head off. All right, everybody else with the with the weapons, take a shot. I heard some machine gun fire right there. Yeah. Whoa. Um, Shane can shoot. Shane got it. Yeah, that time. I need to stop trying to be so impressive because it ain't working. Yeah, you're definitely not impressing the girl in the other vehicle. <laughs> It's 10 to 10, Shane, unless you change the setting on the laser. 63. Uh, you're up, Zulki. Yeah. That would be a miss. So the machine guns go wide, but the laser hits it this time. All right. Creature. Okay, it continues to lumber forward as uh, you place your your charge. It's now about a body length away from your charge, so it'll be another couple turns before it gets to it. Um, and it is now 60 meters away, which puts the machine guns actually that puts them into short range now. So you get uh, plus, a plus, 10 more? plus 10 more, so plus 20 now instead of plus just plus 10. 
And okay. you guys can all take another shot if you want. Now we can. Where did you? I hit. All right, twelve. Oh, that's even better. I hit. <laughs> she, I broke it. She pops the power cord out of his ex <laughs> his machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> out of his laser. Yeah, you know Comes disconnected. Didn't know what's gonna happen? I had two good rolls. <laughs> Okie dokie. It, what's it doing here? Is it is it is continuing off the road? Or? It, it, it's it looks like it's headed towards your. It's chasing you. Is what you think? <laughs> I'm not in the vehicle yet. I guess no. I'm you're only halfway running. back to the vehicle at this point. Run, it, run, it's, run! It's okay. Tell me it's, when, guys. Tell me when. I'm kind of peeking back. <laughs> I'll split my head like this. You know. Uh, that's a hit for and, Zoki. Between the eyes, so the one's looking forward, one's looking back. 400 points. All right. It is looking really beat up. And it kind of is waving its head back and forth. And it it veers off away from you guys. So it's... Off, sorry, it, doll. Guys, finish it off. It's still at a range of six. 60 meters. So if you guys want to take another shot. Whoever hasn't shot, but take it, one. It is now completely off the bridge and completely off the road. Tell the trucks to start gunning it. I tell Am I climbing to... in the vehicle yet? You'll get in this. You'll get it. You'll be back at the vehicle okay. at the end of this round. Okay. Just in time to go and uh, defuse your own bomb. <laughs> So we're all getting another shot? Yeah, everybody gets another shot. Well, if you want to take okay. one. <laughs> nope, you don't seem to be able to get that power cord reconnected there, Rini. <laughs> what the <heck? laughs> uh, I know what happened. Plus is positive, minus okay. is negative. On that last one, Shane, you forgot the slash R. <laughs> okay, okay. You just, That's you just typed 100. Okay. <laughs> 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 It no, just says rolling a hundred. Yeah, but see, that's better than a hundred. <laughs> All right, John, you did hit it though. Zoki just yes, I did. All right, so he really didn't. Uh, he really didn't uh, mess up his. The the oh. first the first roll was a d hundred that he rolled a hundred <laughs> on. All right, so John lets loose with the final with another burst, and the thing just collapses. Ah, the mighty conqueror. Did you see that? Did you see that? No, I was running away from it. <laughs> I kind of wanted it to explode with the explosives and be like the uh, Oregon whale story. <laughs> oh, I am not going in there to collect the whale blubber. <laughs> you know about the Oregon whale story? They, they had a beached whale. Back in the 70s. Yeah, I think I remember that story. The best way to get rid of it was to blow it up with the dynamite. <laughs> it, it didn't go as planned. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Mm. Uh, All right, Trevor. All right, so it collapses. It's there on the side of the road. It's just laying there now, twitching a little bit. Um, Joel, you can go and retrieve your charge. Or they'll drive up and you can jump out and grab it, however you want to do it. Um, sure. Well, it's not my truck, so you can I drive up all you want. On the dashboard right between the driver and the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Matt, they, they tell you to uh, take that apart. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, they don't even let you bring it back in the vehicle. For them. But it's a nice sculpture of a of a of a gopher now. Yeah. Yeah. When they're now not. I'll pull out the 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 can the two mortar charges and put those away. Then I form my hand into a hammer and I tell him, "Remember the the the, the birdie and the the doggy." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everything comes from. What company in that story? Steel? <laughs> How big is the head? What? How big is the head? 
It's about a meter long. Oh my goodness, he's gonna <laughs> stuff it. I'm gonna mount that bad boy in the front of my floor. <laughs> <laughs> So you're from Texas. You get a steam cleaner and spray it out so you got a shell. <laughs> aren't they? Aren't they a That's one heck of a hood ornament. <laughs> what are they? What do they look like? A giant right? says cross between a worm and a centipede and so part I'm, plant, I'm part animal. It's kind of a carapace. Yeah, it probably yeah. is. Yeah, so you could you could just blow the guts out and steam it. You know. Yeah, mount it on the on the grill. You can wear it as a hat. Well, I'm not going to go. That's a <laughs> big hat. A big well, hat. He, he stick his antenna out the eye holes. and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I saw a bigger brother. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, Zulki races ahead and jumps out. Chops the head off, straps it on the back of the Visig Explorer. You have just enough time to do that before the the trucks catch up to you guys, because they okay. start once, once the thing is dead and Matt gives the all clear. They start rolling forward again. And heroes! <laughs> all right, so I guess we go back into our procession and the way. Yep. Okay, back in a second, guys. Okay. Keep going. And he actually, Mac actually doesn't stop you when you start uh, pulling the pieces off because he says, "Yeah, we'll we'll need some sort of proof that works." <laughs> yeah. These things carry a four thousand credit bounty. Whoa. Nice. Uh, so a... it, it'll get split between everybody, but uh, it's still hey, I'll... it's still a chunk of change. <clears throat> You're welcome, everybody. <clears throat> <laughs> so we were making fun of that idea for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I mean, they could have taken a picture, but. If you got physical evidence, that's even better. Um, <laughs> all right, so you guys continue on your way. The slithers laying there on the side of the road, um, and uh, you guys roll into town. You get you get to Braylon's rest without any any other difficulty because you were you were almost there. It's another twenty minutes of driving maybe uh, to get there, and. Uh, um uh you uh get into town and it's a it's a moderate sized town probably a population of about 5000 there's a crossroads here there's the the road branches and goes off to the west you guys are going to be taking the southeast uh fork but uh, it splits off and that road goes off towards the west coast um and so there's a a, a bit of a a crossroads community has grown up here. Um, they also do uh, a little bit of uh, mining. This is also a mining town as well, because um, you're 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 here and you're just at the edge of the mountains. Um, uh, but it's probably population. It's not as big as Restale. Uh, it's probably about five thousand people uh, that live here. But um, uh, you guys pull off. There's a Truck stop, basically, uh, shopping center, charging stations, hotel, uh, and that uh, a waste center there. Um, you guys all pull off there, uh, go in and get some food. Uh, Mac puts in a call. Uh, do you guys anything particular you want to do or buy while you're there? Would this be a good um, point? I could separate away from the group and say I'm gonna go shop around, and then I send that that signal. You that could, message. yes. That's, so. 
the I'll uh, I'll uh, buy lunch for a certain young lady there. All right. Are the, uh, the how, how much do I spend? Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Maybe before I say something. <laughs> <laughs> kind of tight on the cash. I, I better stop and look at the wallet here. <laughs> oh, I've only got six credits. <laughs> well, that would be enough. <laughs> You'd spend okay. the rest of it, though. So I'm broke now. <laughs> It's no, it, it, it's it's no. <laughs> it's a it, it's just a couple credits oh. per person, so you only have to spend four. Um, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> and uh, a couple bucks will get you a good meal. A couple credits. Uh, remember, this is this is roughly nineteen seventy, mid seventies, early eighties uh, prices um, for a lot of things. That's how I how I gauge prices. Um, okay. So a couple bucks will get you a decent meal. Um, Is anybody near the ground transports? Uh, yeah, the, they go out and grab some food, and one one of their people, there's like they park all next to each other, and there's like two or three of the guards stay out there with the vehicles, while the rest, the drivers and the other guards, go in and get some food, and then. After a few minutes, the guards that went inside after they're done eating, they come out and swap places. That's what's going to happen. So they, yeah, they they do leave some people out by their vehicles. All right, I will get some food and then head back out and talk to the guards. Okay. Like, hey man, what'd you think of that uh, slither there? He says, yeah, I don't see those very often anymore. But glad that's that's why we bring you guys along on this stuff. Hey, well, wasn't there <laughs> bounties on uh, killing creatures? Yeah, that's that's where we got the head. My head's worth something. Uh, that mm -hmm. better be proof that we kill, but we're keeping it. Well, I'm just gonna say to the guy, I hope it's worth it. I mean, like, what are we transporting? I mean, it's an all, awful lot of effort for some food. If I can get him to say something. What is he? What? What's his facial expressions when he says that? When he asks that? I think Tom is gone. <clears throat> He's typing. Yep. Is he typing? Yep. But the audio cut out. He said, "Give him a second. I always think of what yeah. I'm wondering is, I'm wondering is when you ask that question to the guy, if there was any tells, any. Uh, oh, there we go. Buttons. Sorry about that. Yeah. Right, I welcome back. I seem to have bumped the uh, power button on my headset. Um, just enough to turn it off. All right, so. What was the last thing I said? <laughs> you you were telling us precisely what was in the uh, ground transport. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. Did, did, did I? You guys explain to Eric about the bounty? Yeah. Yeah, we. Okay. Yeah, we explained about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were going to go talk to the guard. You asked them what they thought about that, and they commented that that's why they bring you guys along is to deal with that kind of stuff because happens every once in a while actually happens more often than we'd like still you'd think after 40 years we'd have this planet clean to those monsters but i think they breed faster than we can find them right then then we asked what was in the, the cargo okay i didn't hear that question <laughs> all right all right so um uh, they're like, uh, let's see, that truck's full of food, that one's got machine parts, there's some robots in that one, actually for both of those, uh, that one's just got like maintenance robots, and that's got some mining robots, uh, clothes, and miscellaneous goods. Toys, there's some toys I think in that one. They tell you, it's just, it's just, it's nothing super exciting the robots are probably the most valuable stuff in there um hey sounds sounds like an extra large shipment to my dad's store yeah basically 
it's it's <laughs> that kind of it's that kind of thing. It's it's general merchandise that's going to the Streel, not the Streel, the the Pan Galactic operation in this town. Okay. okay. But yeah, they're, 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 they talk to you guys. They don't have any problem chatting you up, chatting with you. Uh, so you can, if you want to ask, you can ask them anything you want. I'll tell you if they give you an answer or not. Well, since I broke so away... So you from... come here often? He's chatting up the girl. <laughs> <laughs> since I broke away from the group to try to send that signal out, um, uh-huh. I'm also look around for a taxidermist so I can get the head cleaned and done yeah, right. There's nothing right where you're at. Um, you know for sure you could get it done and back in point true. Um, and without exploring the town a little more, there might be something here in town. You could ask around. Let's um, go buy all the ice you can find. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm glad I'm not driving in that vehicle. <laughs> That's why I'm by the ice. Uh, <sighs> a big pot. This is a crawfish pot, man. Those are huge. This you thing's a crawfish. meter. We're talking like a meter and a half for the pot. <laughs> this is like get somebody's hot tub and light a fire under it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you want to hit up the PGC guards about before we uh, move on? She never did answer my question. <laughs> oh. And that was your answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was your answer. No, um, she talks to you a little bit. She's she's kind of quiet. She doesn't say much. Um, you kind of really what, have to what, draw things out what, of her. Uh, other, I mean, what is her specialty that she brings to this company? Um, in this case, she's she's one of the just uh. She's a, a hired gun, uh, so she has she has a, a skill with the. Uh, uh, let's see which car is she in. She's in. Yeah, she's got a machine gun. She she's your she spells you on the machine gun when you guys are driving, or not you, but the other. Um, so she's the, she's one of the machine gunners over there. Yeah. Um. And uh, and and then she does. She, so she's 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 a basic kind of military paramilitary type person. That's all you really get out of her. Um, all right. Well, it's something. It's a yep. start. <laughs> <laughs> just tired again because she shot you down. Um, <laughs> all right. Any other questions? No, I guess we should. Was I able to get the, the radio signal out? Yeah. Uh, yes. You you're able to send it um, without any any difficulty at all because every, everybody goes in for food uh, for the most part. And you you make an excuse to stick around by the the explorer for a minute, securing the head or whatever, um, and nobody thinks twice about it, and uh, and uh, you can you can send off a quick transmission. Um, and then so you guys all finish up eating, and uh, as you're about to. As you're as you're heading out of the the restaurant area back to the vehicles, um, a uh, a hover car pulls up, and uh, with as you know, Braylon's Rest Sheriff's Department on it, and uh, uh, comes driving over to your vehicles, Loki, and Max sees it and he comes walking over. 
and, he, and uh, the couple a couple guys get out, human and the Yazirian get out, and uh, come walking over, and, and they see the slither head there, so they 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 walk right over. And says, "Oh, you, I see you uh, picked up one of the. We got the call. You guys uh, took out a slither. It's pretty obvious. There's the head right there." And they go over and they they look at it and verify yes, it is a very freshly killed creature, <laughs> which isn't hard to do because they can they can tell as soon as they start to get close. And uh, is it is it starting to become a little sun baked? <laughs> Not yet. It's only been an hour. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, um, what do they smell like on the inside? Yeah, who knows? Um, they're part plant, part animals so you you decide um and so they they confer uh with mac for a bit and uh and they pull out a a little uh data pad and uh mark some stuff on it and he marks it and uh he goes all right we'll uh we'll, we'll uh forward this on to uh point true and uh, they'll uh, send send the bounty your direction. Well, I have to admit, we definitely appreciate it. That thing has uh, wandered down this way a few times. We've had to, we've driven it off, but no one's really had the the gumption to go after it. So, uh, you've, uh, we definitely appreciate the fact that you've taken it out. Hopefully, it's just the one, and there aren't more that we've been seeing. Well, hey, you know, let us know. We'll. Uh... We'll pop the head off another one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So after that, they, they get back in their vehicle and drive off. And uh, Max says, all right, let's 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 get this show on the road. we still got five and a half so more hours. hours. So that's 4,000 credits. It's going to be split between the, the dozen of you and the explorers, yeah. So, uh, But nice. it'll it'll come in when you get back. Cool. So it'll be, you know. And I think I'll let the, the human drive. It'll be like just 300 or so credits when it's all said and done. But, um, okay, yeah, so, yeah, you swap yeah. drivers. Um, yeah. And, uh. Yeah. So you swap drivers and you, and you head out. Um, at this point, the scenery changes. Um, you still got mountains um, to your left. Uh, you're still kind of going along the edge of the mountains, at least for the first half of this segment of the drive. Um, in fact, if you're looking at the map, until you get about here, you've got mountains on the left, or at least foothills. And uh, but to the to your right now, instead of being more mountains or plains, um, is is more deserty, dry, very dry, you know, scrub oak here and there. Uh, it's not blowing sand dunes. It is there's there's grass, there's like low grass and things like that. But it, it's very dry um, in in that part of the in the area. So. Um, so, the road is still stable, though, right? Yeah, the road is it's it's fully paved. It looks like it gets maintained regularly. Um, uh, you know, it, it's it's a basically a two-lane highway, one each direction. Although there's no reason you can't drive on uh, both sides if there's no other vehicles nearby, and you have very long sight lines at this point. You can see several kilometers. Uh, uh, down the road, uh, if you've ever ever driven through Nevada, uh, <laughs> that's Boy, very much what, 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 what you could think of. What was that? Maybe the Midwest too. You got some yeah. kind of long yep. lines of sight. Yep, mm -hmm. long lines of sight. Uh, but the I'm I'm thinking more of the terrain around you is is more yeah, like okay. like driving through Nevada, um, complete with the white dirt or Western Utah. Yeah, so uh, that's that's what this kind of terrain is. A little bit south of here, past Hookerville, you get into more Midwest type prairie grass and stuff like that. Um, so, 
uh, that goes on for a while. And at this point, um, uh, Zolki's Uh, Zolki's Explorer's in front, and, uh, Chicheka, you're in the, you're, you're, you're the tail end of the convoy. Yeah. Um, All right. So, for, for this part of it, Mac, the Mac, Mac with the laser is still in the middle. Um, is there anything else, any other conversation topics you want to take up with the, uh, Not really. I mean, they seem like okay guys. They're just hired to, yep, hired work, hired guns, which is what. Yeah, they don't know anything about the spaceship so far. Yeah, you have to kill them. You you do you do hear that? Uh, oh, oh, that. One one of the comments, uh, not in your vehicle, Rini, where Mac is, is that uh, uh, they joke that he's on. Uh, He's on penance duty. That's why he's got this this convoy job. He's <laughs> down in the middle of nowhere. He's, he's kind of in uh, Commander Reese's bad graces at the moment because he was he was in charge of that last uh, job that got that uh, yeah, a little fiasco. That little bit of a fiasco, yeah. So is he the one that's supposedly in charge of this job? Yes, Mac is the is the a leader of the group. He's he's your commander for this mission. Well, there you go. We 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 make make him look good, and he'll just let us. Either that, or we could just knock these guys out, take all these supplies, and make him look even worse. <laughs> <laughs> but we still don't know if we're the baddies or not. <laughs> we're not the baddies. We're good. Guys, we just like to shoot and blow up things. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 we might be employed by the baddies, but if we didn't know, then what? How does that make us baddies? There you go. That's true. <laughs> the villain's always a hero of his own story. Well, <laughs> until you decide not to be the villain, then you, you know when you realize, hey, uh, I was playing the villain role. Anyway, depends who's writing the story. Maleficent here all of a sudden. <laughs> We're I'm wicked. Just, <laughs> I'm just seeing that we're having a hard time coming up with anything to find out if they were the ones that shot down the ship. Well, really. as far as I could tell, though, they're not. They were just hired to go after the ship was already down. Right. I don't think so, they're really bad guys. I don't think well, we're the bad guys. It's kind of like we finished this job and, and, you know, these become contacts for us as we. I don't know. I'm lost. I could go with that one. That that. I say we just just finish up the job and get to know these folks. Get to make friends with them. Yeah, but I want to know why she hates streets. Source of uh, future NPCs and hirelings. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we're in charge. And I, I have a feeling that if we, as we do well he, with them, we will possibly get to know. Um, Oh, Miss Reese, whatever her name is, um, and that may help us to understand the the. You know, that that's the only way we're going to get to know why she's um, her animosity towards. Her. Yeah, because I mean, how they're just they. She's hired them. They know her personality or whatever in general, but they don't. They don't really know what drives her. Only yeah. she does, and so we've got to just we've got to somehow get to where she likes us and trusts us. You know, either that or get really lucky with this camera that everybody and their dog can see hidden under my bed, <laughs> or you know, recording device. <sighs> All right. <coughs> so you continue on your way. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, getting late in the day. 
Um, well, it's been a long drive. It's not dark. It's actually the new. The sun's almost at, at its zenith at this point because the slow rotation of the planet. Um, so the uh, so it's fully bright outside. But uh, you've been driving for probably about ten hours at this point. Um, you're you're about an hour outside of Tuckerville. You've you've now passed out from the mountains. You, they're they're way off on the on the right or on the left, but where you're at is basically desert. Um, you're about here, uh, and uh, Zulki and Dole need to make a perception check, an intuition roll. That's what happens when you're in front. <sighs> oh crap! You 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 were uh, cracking jokes in the cab, so. <laughs> <laughs> you don't notice anything. Yep. Yeah, meanwhile, they're pilfering all my stuff, and. <laughs> Who else was it that was going to make the roll? Zulky. <laughs> uh. Did you roll Zulky? Zulky, you there? <laughs> I think we lost him. I think Zulky's gone. Somebody got to roll from. Eric should roll for him. What's the chances of that happening twice? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Oh my goodness! Dare I? Where did he go? He was yeah, just go here. It. Yeah, I know. He probably just stepped away from his desk for a minute. Give it a roll there. Still not good. Make it happen. All right. So you uh, are going for a while, and uh, uh, you don't really notice anything. But the the driver of the lead uh, truck behind you. Let's see what they do. Um, yeah, he calls up to you. He says, "There's something." Way up there, off in the distance. Do you guys see that? It's moving this way, and it's big. Mama it's... wondered what happened to baby. Do we get to shoot again? <laughs> what happened to baby? <laughs> they, all right. they communicate ultrasonically. <laughs> and the carrier wave just went away. Um, Eric, make another roll. Now that you're, it's been pointed out to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> he, he still doesn't recognize it. I see it black and white. That's my problem. <laughs> There's heat shimmers coming off the desert. Um, all right. But your driver says, okay, wait, I think I see it. Well, we could also roll for uh, Zulki. Yeah, again. roll for Zulk. Somebody roll for Zulki again. Eric's tired of rolling. Although, me. you're progressing in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> 176, 67. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. 45. See? There you go. Zulki says, oh, I got it. There it is. 2 o'clock. Actually, no. How no. far? Uh, this, this is out about a couple kilometers away from you still but um it is what is known on the planet these days as a satho dragon and what this is is a um if it was if it was if it was geared up you'd call it a cyber dragon but uh this one doesn't have any of the cybernetics attached to it. This is just a giant lizard. Um, 
So, what? Hello? What was that? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, oh, are these things like T Rex size? How big are they? Uh, that's what I'm looking. Uh, oh, okay. they're, yeah, they're, yeah, T Rex size. Not quite. Um, they're, 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 think of it as a giant iguana. Um, I'm going to pull up a picture here. Uh, just a second. Oh, is it? I'm starting to miss the little cycle squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Google has failed me. Um, How dare you, Google? Wait, is it one of these? Um, let's see. Let me take a picture. Beginning of a Bing commercial. Take a picture. It'll last longer. Is it one of these? Ah, uh, come on, take the picture. <laughs> there we go. Send. I mean, I found a picture, just not the one from the book. No, that's a Megasaurus. Oh, that's a Megasaurus. Um, this is. Um, I'll show you. This is a different artist's rendition, not the one in the monster manual. In the monster book, but uh, here's this is basically what it looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, but without the cybernetics. So that from... that's off the Star Frontiers wiki. That's the picture they have there. I'm not sure who drew that. I don't know, not know where that picture comes from. I've never seen it before, well, but it's no, no, really no, good. I that is a, um, I think it's a Gamma World picture. It might be. Yeah, it is. I know that picture. Yeah. So. Tell you what, it looks like something we could shoot at. Yeah, it's. But it's probably a very fast something we can yes, shoot at. Yes, this one is m very fast. Uh, <laughs> very fast. So this, uh, uh oh, that's not a good sound. When is it going to be in range? That's all I want to know. Well, it's in range of the laser now. Let me... I need to get some power. Just a second. Laptop guy? No, my uh, headphones. But I've got a nice long USB cable that I can plug into it. I just got to... Plug in the power. Nice long USB. Okay. Now it won't be bat me anymore. So I was going to post this other picture of it. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Like that? Yeah, that guy, and the one I just posted. So, yeah. that's what you're looking at. It, but it doesn't have the cybernetics. It is just the lizard. Um, it's a big lizard, and it's fast. Think of a giant iguana. Um, but, uh, and it's, it's a ways is away. Is it breathing fire? It is not breathing fire. That is one of the cybernetic implants. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is it is just tooth and claw in this case. In this case, um, it's just there's a lot of tooth and claw there. <laughs>
All right, so um, I am going to actually move us to a different map. Oops, wrong thing there. Uh, let's go to a different map. So I got all these maps ready to go. I just forgot the one of the... Okay. All right, so the blue is the road that you're on. Uh, the cyber dragons there in the distance, and the scale we're using is one uh, grid is 10 meters. So I'm going to assume you try to get close to it. So um, before you open fire like you did before. So at this point, uh, and the ruler should work. So we're 270 or so meters away at this point. So what is? The... I'm thinking we may want to like try to set the explorers up right about here, so that the trucks can hang. You know, the the, the ground cars or whatever ground trucks can hang back a minute. You know, a bit and that sounds... be safeish. So and I would say the the road is paved. The elevation changes to each color change is about a two meter rise. Oh, is that all? So, yeah, so this is just you're you're out of the hills. This is just but it's it's rough terrain. So the explorers can go off the road. The hover transports can't. Or the, the ground trucks can't here. Um yeah, it's not it's not you're just coming out. You're out of the mountains at this point. This is just some hilly area. You're just coming out of that. Um, that's what this is. Kind of the this, this, yeah, this this isn't really tall mountainous terrain here. This is more just low rolling hills at this point. Um, so, but you've come through this kind of defile, and then you saw the creature out in the distance, and it's moving towards you, and uh, you're moving towards it. Okay. You could put. Oh, yeah, let's. I was going to say, you can put up to two vehicles in a square if you want to. Um, but no vehicles I, can I be in the say... square with the dragon. What do you think about me staying back with the ground cars, with one of the explorers? Chicken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. He is in the one that has the laser that has the double range of everybody else's. So oh, okay. He, yeah, has, then, okay that's... he has the greater range. Uh, there's not much I can do unless we try to herd it into a trap. I mean, I could go off to some distant spot, set up a trap, and then you guys try to shoot it you know, and steer it into the trap. How, how hard would it be for the explorers to get up on some of these ridges? Not hard at all. Okay, they're not really ridges. Yeah, they're, they're not really ridges. Two, so it's four, not... Six, eight meters high at the highest. So yeah, it's gradual. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're just, they're just kind of low hills. I mean, they are high ground, but... Yeah, you and probably the Satha Dragon can run right up them. Um, do you think... So I'm thinking explore on the top of this thing, explore on the top of this thing, and then maybe the laser guy back here, and the other guys back this direction as far as possible. What about using okay. the, uh, the mortar... To see if we could scare this thing away with a concussion. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. We can start shooting at it right now while the other guy is getting position. And we could still set a trap somewhere, you know, halfway here. I don't think this thing's going to stick to roads. So if we set a trap like there, and it gets, if, if, if it reaches that point, then. Uh, We try to blow it up. Just because I like to blow things up. I'm blessing. 
Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to let you actually detonate something. Okay, so. Hey, we could put the head out there as bait. Uh, it's midnight. Leave my head alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We don't have a whole lot of time here, guys. Yeah, we actually probably should uh, stop here with the setup. So that is the Explorer with Dole and Zolki. This is right, the we... Explorer with Mac with Rini, and then this one in the back is Chicheka's Explorer. Another and option we can think about over the next few days, I should have enough... Um, if I break up my T -day, T19 day t into pieces, I could... Uh, I got 20 timers. I could set up 20 mines. Make a mine field. Yeah, but how much time do you got? Probably well, not a lot. You have to drag around... And I chuck them out the back. Yeah. I say we use the uh, <clears throat> mortar. I still think the mortar idea is a good one. And I'll give you one other Here. bit. Given your speed, the ground trucks are going to have to move about 30 or 40 meters forward before they can stop. Oh. Yeah, we're not stopped. Yeah, you're not stopped. You're still in motion at this point. Let's see. And how how many how many meters is a square? Ten. Ten the yeah. other thing we could try to do is not kill this thing, but run interference while the hover truck or the ground trucks book it down the road. Yeah. Well. I, I'm I'm thinking we should just charge it with the explorers, all, with the three explorers, guns a blazing, and get it. You know whether we hit it or not, just just make ourselves big and loud, and then yeah, and then those guys then could follow along just like you said. Can we call in air support? <laughs> There's <laughs> none nearby. Awesome right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay, I guess we stew on that for the next two weeks. Yeah. Or so we uh, next uh, next Friday. So just next a week. Friday. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Uh, so I'll give you this. Um, you're currently traveling uh, at 50 meters a turn, so five squares a turn, just because it's kind of windy through here. Um, right. Normally, you'd be doing double that on the straightaways. And the ground trucks have an, a deceleration speed of 30 meters per turn. So they have to move 20. This, so they have to move two squares. Before they can stop. Before they can stop. So they, they're going to move two squares each on the next turn. And then, they will, then they'll be stopped if you want them to stop. If you want them to go faster, they've got to get um, down off the hill. They've got to get to at least here before they can speed up. But, but, they got to make this turn right over here. But then, yeah, they're going to have to slow down a little bit for that turn. And probably for these two here, too. This one and this one. So. Anyways, I'll leave the roll 20 in this map so you guys can come back and look at it during the week. Cool. Thank you. And uh, we'll stop there. All righty. Thank All you right, glad I was able to get in at the tail end. Yeah. Yeah, we're cool. glad you showed up. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Have a good night, guys. The fact that you showed up means you're not celebrating 420 correctly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where did they do this legalization? Uh, that's the, the law for it. But it's actually what I was doing. Okay, wait. Because I think you guys think I was something that I wasn't doing. No, no, we're just joking <laughs> around with you. We know you. Tom said you were at your son's. 
That was my guess, because you say you go visit him every other Friday. Yeah, that's true. But can I put that up? There? Right. Oh. That's uh, so is it? It sounds like it's about bedtime. Yeah, yep. man. Right. Yep. Good night, guys. If you want to drop off, drop off, or you can stay on and chat. All right.